We had 344 cases to 8 p.m. last night of community transmission. Around at least 65 uh, of those uh, were infectious in the community uh, for all or most uh, of their infectious period. Uh, I do want to stress that as we know the last two days we have seen a surge in the number of cases and we expect that to continue. But positively, we are starting to see a decline in cases in the Fairfield government, local government area, but also in the Canterbury-Bankstown local government area. And while the number of cases, especially in Canterbury-Bankstown, are still high, we are starting to see a decline. So that intensive work we've been doing in those areas is starting to have effect. And we ask the community to keep at it, to keep going, and to make sure you stick to the rules. Uh, regrettably, there were two um, deaths overnight because of the Delta strain. A man in his 90s who died in hospital, uh, unfortunately, again, unvaccinated, and our heartfelt condolences to him and his family, to, for, for his family. Uh, we can't imagine what it's like to lose a loved one under these circumstances. And unfortunately, a man in his 30s um, also died in hospital. Uh, again, our heartfelt condolences and sympathies to his family and friends. Uh, we do want to stress the, 30, the, the man in his 30s did have other conditions as well. But notwithstanding that, he obviously succumbed to COVID. Uh, as I mentioned, we are starting to see cases decline in both the Fairfield local government area, but also the Canterbury-Bankstown local government area, which is a positive sign. In Canterbury-Bankstown, the case numbers are still the highest of any local government area, but we're starting to see a trend uh, that we've seen in the last few days, and we know the intensified efforts we're doing in those areas are starting to bear fruit. However, the joining local government areas or the suburbs adjoining those areas of Bayside, Burwood and the Inner West are starting to have an increase in cases. So they're not at high levels yet, but we don't want them to get higher. So please note that if you live in those suburbs around the Bayside, Burwood and Inner West councils, please be on extra alert, come forward for testing. Uh, we don't want to have to include you in those local government areas of concern, but we might have to if case numbers don't uh, at least stabilise or start going down. In the regions, um, Armidale still has no extra cases, Tamworth still has no extra cases, the Northern Rivers still has no extra cases, which are all positive signs. Uh, unfortunately, in the Hunter New England area, there were, uh, I, I believe, around 14 new cases overnight. So Hunter uh, does not look like it'll come out uh, of lockdown later this week. However, we'll wait, await the, the health advice. But just to know that whilst the first three local government areas that I mentioned don't have any additional cases and things are looking very positive. Hunter New England unfortunately isn't looking as positive. And has, as has been foreshadowed in Dubbo, there were two cases overnight. And that follows, which is really important to note, our health experts had told us a few days ago there was some sewage detection in Dubbo, yet we didn't have any cases. So sewage detection has been a good way of identifying or preempting where there may be cases. And after intensive testing and activity, two cases have been identified. And therefore, from 1 p.m. today, Dubbo will go into one week's lockdown. And I understand community leaders and um, various organisations have already been advised of that and that will occur from 1pm today.